I've spent the last week doing some in-depth research on the China situation. I've done numerous videos on China. As I look back through my catalog of videos, I spent a lot of time talking about the ch collapse of the real estate market in China uh, about a year and a half ago, and you may remember the name Evergrande. We seem to have forgotten about that. But I think as I look back in history, I see a, something repeating itself. I see the disillusion, uh, the, the, the collapse of the Soviet Union. For those of you who don't remember that, it happened between 1988 and 1991, a three-year period. Russia went from our biggest fear to a, a collapsed society, struggling to stay alive. And, and I look at what's happening in China right now, and as I dig into the research, and as I read Peter Zion's new book, I believe that China has maybe five years of survival and maybe even challenge uh, Russia and, uh, and it, it collapse even faster. That's what I want to talk to you about this, in this video, because if you own China stocks and if you own the two big elephants in the room relative to China, you need to really consider if the risk is worth the reward. And I want to go through the risk. I want you to come away from this video and say, I understand what's going on. I see the puzzle parts and I'm going to make a decision according to this. Now, this is not financial advice because I'm not going to tell you what to buy or sell. I'm going to try to educate you based upon my past knowledge, my past experience that maybe you don't have. And then you can make a good decision. Should I own Tencent? Should I own Alibaba? Should I own Dai? I don't think you should, but I want to make a case for what I believe. Let's get right at it after I do this disclosure. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. First thing that you need to understand for any economy to function, you've got to have the right people in the right place. And that is to say, you got to make babies who turn into consumers and taxpayers and workers and savers so that you can support the people who are left. Those are babies and the agent. As the agent get old, they become a financial drag. So you've got to have the proper lineup of people. This is China's demographic chart as of 2020. Since that time, they have said, oops, we've made a mistake. We misreported. We don't have 100 million babies that we thought we have. So that, that turnip that you see there that mushroom that you see there is even worse than it was. The base is even smaller than what it is. When that happens, you don't have the workers, you don't have the taxpayers, you don't have the consumers to, to provide the taxes, the consumption that you need. So you're okay, though, as far as consumption, as long as you have the rest of the world buying from you. Who's that? That's the Americas. That's us. That's us who have said, you go make our flat screen DPs. We're going to forget about Motorola and RCA. And you make our flat screen TVs and send them to us And we, because you have cheaper labor. We Send us your Nike shoes. Yeah, Nike will design the shoes and everything over here, but you make them for us. And so what China has done is built an economy economy, built a system that they give each providence the right to build certain products for the United States and the Western world. That, and they were able to do that because money was cheap. That society grew faster than any society in the history of mankind because there was cheap money. 
There was zero interest money. You could borrow money in Germany for a negative interest rate. In, In other words, here, take our money and if you promise to give us that money back in 20 years, we'll give it to you for free. That's what China was built on. But those interest rates were flexible. So now those interest rates are going up. So the cost of debt to building China is going up. We know what happens then. Now, China also recognized in order to build these providences of factories, they needed people to come in from the hinterland and man those factories. So they they built massive towers of apartments and then sold them to the people. Now, the people in the city said, hey, all these people are going to come from the hinterland, and I'll, I'll buy an extra one or two and rent it to them. So they overbuilt. Now, we're in a period of deglobalization, okay? And what does that mean? We have learned through the pandemic and through the broken supply chain, we can't depend on you for everything that we need. We need to bring that manufacturing back to ourselves. That was a mistake. We can't do that anymore. We're not going to be buying everything. We're going to move some of that TV stuff down into uh, South America and and, and into Mexico, some people that we can depend on more. And oh, by the way, your cost of labor is going up, and the cost of shipping across the Pacific Ocean is going up. We wouldn't have that cost if we did it here in the Americas. So do you see how, how China's commerce situation, real estate situation, is turning sour? Then... Vladimir Putin invades Ukraine. What the hell's that all about? That's Vladimir Putin saying, I need to protect my borders. I don't like what I'm seeing happening in NATO, and I've got to get my borders protected so that I can see them coming across the oceans and the seas as opposed to marching up to the borders and then invading. So, Vladimir has strategically, over the last five, ten years, and the big move was in Ukraine, said, I'm going to protect my nation. Now, as a result of that, uh, the Western world has said, we're putting sanctions on you, and we're going to pull our support of your eastern Siberian oil fields out. And so Shell, Exxon, and Mobil Technicians are gone. Wait a second. What's that got to do with China? That's where China gets its oil and gas from. China doesn't have oil and gas. Now, they are China's second supplier to Saudi Arabia, but it's it's the pipeline that they have as opposed to ships coming in. It's a it's a easy flow. So, who does China or get in bed with? Do they go to their supplier and they also get food from Ukraine? Do they go to their supplier of food and energy and say, we're with you? Or do they go to their supplier of money for purchasing their goods and services and say, we're in bed with you? Their backs against the wall. And the reality is they're not in the position to make the decision. We have already decided. Europe has already decided. We can't let this happen again. And and then you throw in the exposure to the coronavirus, which we all believe came out of an animal market in Wunan, China, and, say, and we say, this can't, God, this can't happen again. We can't be exposed to this. We can't have products coming into our country that we don't know are safe. We have to become controllers of our grounds. And that's where the world economy is today. And the guy sitting in the death seat is China. So, You've got a decision to make. What am I going to do about it? 
How am I going to survive? What am I going to do about my portfolio? I own Baidu. I own Tencent. What am I going to do? I own Daidai. Oh, wait. I also own Tesla and Apple. There is not another U.S. company that is more dependent on China than Apple. I, I, I'm watching Apple's announcements of what they're doing, and it's little nonsense stuff. The, 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 the plug-in in the back of their phone, the, the interaction with my car. Okay, that's some software. But what are you going to do for your next iPhone if you don't have a relationship with China? What are you going to do, Tim Cook? You've ignored this problem for years. Oh, you said you were going to build a Foxconn plant up in, in Wisconsin. Where's that at? It didn't happen. You look at our economy. And what you will find is that people make bad decisions because they don't consider change. If you don't believe that, look at Target. What did Target CEO come out and say? We had the wrong inventory. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means that in 2020 and 2021, we were all locked up in our houses. We couldn't get out. And we decided, I need a bigger TV. If I'm going to be sitting here at home, I need a bigger TV. So you ordered one from Target. Hey, our dishes and our silverware, we need to replace that. So you went with your mask on and you bought that from Target. We need a new toaster. So you went and bought that from Target. So the buyer at Target looks at his prior year's sales and says, wow, we need to stock up on toasters and microwave ovens and TVs. But what they didn't recognize is the world changed. We all got out. We aren't sitting at home anymore. When we were sitting at home watching our TV, we were wearing pajama bottoms, flip-flops, and T-shirts. But now we're going out to restaurants. We can't go out into restaurants in flip-flops and T-shirts. We need to buy clothes. But Target doesn't have any clothes. They got TVs and toasters. That's the same thing that happens in the stock market. The stock market is now telling you to buy oil and gas companies and utilities. But wait, isn't Elon, isn't isn't Ford, isn't General Motors gearing up their electric vehicles? Don't they know that, yeah, gasoline is high now, but When I stop using gasoline, what happens to the price? What happened to the price of gasoline in in, uh, March, April, May, June of 2020? It went as low as it's been in a decade. They had ships sitting out in in the Gulf that couldn't download their fuel because they had nowhere to store it. So if the consumer stops buying the gasoline, the prices will come down. And just as a side note, back when this happened in the, in the late 90s and gasoline got up to $4 a gallon, what did we do? We bought smaller cars. But what are you doing now? You're buying bigger vehicles. Hell, there is not a high school boy who would show up in a smart car or, or a a Fiat or a Mini Cooper? No, he needs a big badass truck if he doesn't have a Hummer. We bring this upon ourselves. Why why, why do you go drive down the highway and there's nobody in your passenger seat, nobody in the back seat? Why don't we ride share? That's what we did back in the 90s. We can bring these gasoline prices down if we'll just stop buying so much gas. We bring these things upon ourselves. The consumer is the ultimate controller of the economy. And all we have to do to bring gasoline prices down is boycott the gas stations. It's that simple. So 
bringing that back to China, we are going to boycott China as a nation, as nations. What's going to happen to China? It's evident. The consumer, and we are China's consumer, controls the economy. Not the supplier, not Russia. It's the consumer. If China needs natural gas, we got plenty. We're also, we can buy from you if you will treat us right, if you will stop your bad behavior, if you'll stop stealing our intellectual property, if you'll shut down your cyber invaders. China, the choice is yours. The choice is yours. What are you going to do? The choice is yours. And I'm not speaking to Xi Jinping. I'm speaking to the Chinese population. You make the decision what's going to happen to your country. Because right now, you're on a death march. So, you as an investor, you now know this. You now know the risk you're facing. I do not know which way it's going to go, but there is no way in hell I'm going to buy a Chinese stock. There's no way in hell I'm going to buy any more Tesla. And damn it, I may have to sell my Apple. I'm still with it down what it is. I'm up 90% on it. But Tim Cook, unless you tell me something in the next year, that makes me feel confident that you're going to break your umbilical cord to China, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I can't take that risk. All right. I get a little wound up sometimes. But I've seen this before. I know what's going to happen. I'm going to do a live stream probably next week that, damn it, you need to, you need to understand history and you need to understand that change drives profits. And we are in the midst of some astronomical change. And it is driven by big data and artificial intelligence. And up until this time, all that big data has been controlled by four firms. But now, as I told you yesterday, Chevrolet gave my wife a t-shirt in exchange for her data. There's a reason they're doing that. There's a reason McDonald's is asking for you to buy on the app. Connect the dots. It's apparent what's about to happen. It's apparent who is going to come out of this as winners and losers. You just need to understand history and then understand change. And don't pay attention to what inflation. We inflation is inflation. You control that. You control the price of gasoline. Not the gas companies. If you'll stop buying it, the price will come down. If you'll put somebody in that passenger seat, in the back seats, the price will come down. Think about that. You could, you could cut the need by gas for gas just by putting one person in, in, you could cut the need for gas in one half just by putting one person in your passenger seat. You could double that by putting another person in the back seat and another person in the the other back seat. You got that big ass truck. You got that big ass SUV. You can put six people in there. You, you personally can change the price of fuel in a matter of a week. This is asinine. Okay, get me wound up. It's your fault. It's your fault. You control your destiny, not, not someone else. Yeah, you need baby formula. I don't have a solution for that one. Okay, that's my rant for this week. Uh, I'll let you know about that um, that live stream. I think I, I think I'm going to probably try to do that. I don't know, maybe once once every two weeks. I just have 
I just have so much experience that I've had that you need to know about. All right, I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Thank you.